It was January 8th in 1993, where here on the left, where this Chase Bank is, seven people were murdered, brutally murdered, gunshot, and thrown in the freezer. Two freezers. Um, this building is a Chase Bank now. This was the Browns Chicken, the site of the Browns Chicken Massacre. And that building from 1993 stood until at least the late 90s, possibly, uh, well, I know it, this building was built. So I do remember driving by here many a time and seeing this Brown's chicken empty like a ghost house. It was a sore monument, just a reminder of the horror. We are in Fall River, Wisconsin today, beautiful sunny day, and we are here to pay our respects to Richard and Lynn Ellenfelt. Uh, they were killed along with uh, five other employees at the Brown's Chicken in Palatine, Illinois, which is known as the Brown's Chicken Massacre. And we are in. That was close. This is Justin J. Selji. Justin passed away in 2000 and uh, 2002, uh, December 30th, right after Christmas. And next to Justin is uh, Brandon. Brandon Kennedy, his nickname was BK. And uh, he passed away just over a year later, April 21st, 2003. I wonder what happened to these guys. Well, we're here, uh, I know about where uh, Richard and Lynn's grave is. We'll walk over and head that way. A very sad story that happened back in Palatine, Illinois in 1993, January 8th, 1993. It's a fateful day. Um, Richard and uh, Lynn, they were, uh, they, they were from, well, Richard was from here, this town, very small town here. And uh, Lynn, they met at the University of Wisconsin and uh, studied together, got married, and uh, Richard worked a, a series of government jobs, but then they pooled all their savings together and decided to uh, shoot the whole ball of wax on uh, investment for the rest of their lives, and that would be the a franchise, Brown's Chicken, which was very up and coming in Chicago area back in the uh, 80s and 90s. Actually, they were started in Chicago in 19, I think it was 1947 or something like that. Anyway, um, everything was going fine. They're building this. They put everything, blood, sweat, and tears into it, doing all the work themselves. He had five employees. They finally settled into a routine and uh, it was just uh, a bad, uh, uh, on the night of January 8th of 93, they were closing up. Everyone was uh, wrapping up. Um, the, uh, the employees included two high school boys, uh, Michael Castro and Rico Solis. So these were kids. We had uh, Guadalupe, Maldonado, who was a family man, middle age, loving father, 
And then we had Thomas Menz and Marcus Nelson. I think they were two single guys. I know one of them was. And uh, two robbers came in after closing. These two guys uh, went to Fremd High School in Palatine together. Bad guys. Uh, they had decided that they wanted to do something big. And so they decided that they were going to come in and have a four-piece chicken, which uh, we'll come back to later. That actually was cr crucial in uh, piecing this case together. And uh, then rob the place. But it wasn't enough to rob the place. They took everybody, uh, rounded them up, put them in the freezers. There were two freezers. And... Uh, shot them all, execution style, and then left. Now this case went uh, unsolved for many, many years. I think it was at least a decade. And uh, it took a break, as it, as it many times did and does in these cases. And the break came in the way of the girlfriend of one of these two barbarians. Her name was Anne Laquette. And Anne decided that uh, she couldn't hold it in. And of course, these guys were, uh, her boyfriend was blabbing about it, bragging about it to her. This this is these, I've seen a few of these. And I, I think they were actually built this way, or maybe they're Maybe as it was falling apart, they came back someday and replicated these, but... Uh, John, this is Eliza, wife of John Hicks. June 10th, 1821 to 1894. Boy, we're going way back here, y'all. Imagine what it looked like here. Imagine the country. <laughs> Cowboys and Indians. Uh, she, she couldn't hold it inside anymore. Guilty conscience. Uh, she finally, yeah, I think it was a decade later, went to the police. And uh, they, they arrested these two guys, Juan Luna and uh, James Degorski. James was the big mouth who was bragging about it. I think he told her, and he also told um, one of her girlfriends. So there were there were two people that knew about this, and uh, they arrested him. Here are the graves. This is for uh, this is Richard and Lynn. Uh, Richard was born November 10th, 1942, and Lynn was born October 6th, 1943. Of course, they both passed on uh, January 8th, 93. I think Richard may have had a sister that's shown here, Anne, uh, Anne, Anne Rachel, and the parents, Donald and... Uh, Rachel, 1917, so that checks out, it would be the parents, uh, maybe a veteran, straighten that out, yeah, we've got World War II, thank you for your service, Donald. It was uh, DNA that really put the case together. As uh, I mentioned, they ordered their four-piece chicken. And the forensic, uh, I don't know if it was a coroner, but who, uh, cold case, FBI, there was a woman who went painstakingly through the garbage and saved and froze all, all the contents, including the chicken that I think it was Juan Luna ate smart move guy and uh, that's how they really got him 
DNA wins again. Yes. I love seeing those stories, hearing these stories. They're all coming out now with the familial DNA matching. This is the last year and this year. These are the years we're going to really start seeing these. A lot of old men, old people get uh, justice. But anyway, these two guys, they, uh, they got their justice. It didn't take, thank God, until they were 60 or 70. And they are now in the clink the rest of their lives. They should be put to death. They'll be getting great food. They've been getting a warm bed. So it's the best we can do in our society, I guess. Ironically, uh, James uh, was, I don't know if it was the day after or within days, this Dagorski guy got his you-know-what kicked in especially his face. His face was rearranged by a prison guard or jail guard for the trial. So he just uh, recently had won a $500,000, almost $500,000 lawsuit. But he probably will not see a dime of that. First of all, he's in prison. Can't go to the movies. And uh, the families will sue to get that, uh, if not the, uh, the prison system to pay for his uh, apartment fee in his jail cell so we'll see where that goes but uh, sad it's just a sad story uh, seven people lost um, Richard and Lynn uh, we hope you're we hope you're resting in peace